Hey, I'm back. Doesn't matter that it's been a while. What if I told you you could build a NAS network attached storage for like 20 bucks, 30 bucks? What if I told you you could get seven megabit megabytes per second of write speed and only four of read speed? What if I told you it was a Raspberry Pi and a 33 gig stick? We're gonna give it a go. Not practical. There's much better devices. This is pointless. Pretty silly. But hey, let's give her a go. Okay, so what is a NAS? NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. It's basically a, some storage connected to your network so all of the different computers can access it given that they have the right credentials. Uh, this is different than like a USB. So uh, with a network attached storage with a NAS, all of the devices on your network can access this storage. With a USB, you can only share these files with one computer at a time. And in order to share it with a different computer, you then have to connect it to a different computer. And then you can share those files. With a NAS, the file lives over here. And say this guy wants to retrieve it, he can just, doop, there it goes. But uh, it's still over here. So this guy can uh, upload something. Uh, this guy can download or upload. Uh, you can basically, it's like having a USB, but attached to your, uh, your router uh, in your network so that anybody can do it. Anyways, we've decided that we are going to build a, a really cheap NAS. It's not going to perform very well. You're going to use a Raspberry Pi 0W. Uh, you're going to need an SD card, 8 gigs or bigger probably. Preferably an HDMI cable so you can plug it in at your software so we can write the uh, image to the SD card. You're going to need Diet Pi. That's the software we're going to use. I'm going to get into that. Uh, a Raspberry Pi Zero. It's got a single core, one gigahertz processor. We're all familiar with it. But I'm not going to go into it. Uh, USB drive with uh, micro SD. That's what I have. Uh, I got a 32 gig one. If you're on Windows, download PuTTY so that you can SSH into the Pi. That just means connect remotely. And of course, you're going to need an SD card. So. Uh, DietPi is the software we're going to use to create a little uh, share on our network. So you want to go to dietpi.com, click download. Raspberry Pi will be the first one. Click on that one. Since we're using a Raspberry Pi Zero, grab the top image, ARM v6 32-bit image. Give that a download. Next, you're going to want Etcher. Etcher is burning software. You're going to want to have that, download it, and install it. I'm pretty sure I already have it. I guess we should unzip this file first. All right, once that's done uh, extracting, open up Etcher, uh, come to your opened image, grab that, that's going to be the image. So once you've got your image selected, uh, click on select target and grab your uh, USB device, your SD card, what you're writing it to, should be an SD card, and click uh, select. This will erase all of the data on this device, it's gone. Uh, so. If you click flash, that's on you, not me. It's going to ask for permissions, say yes, and let it write. Awesome. Now that that is done, we are going to unplug and replug the SD card because we need to make some changes. So if you take a look at uh, this PC, you'll see a USB drive for uh, 126 megs. We're gonna to wanna to open that one up. This is the boot directory for the uh, for DietPy. We're just gonna go in and make a small change. So under dietpy.txt, open that up, and you will see a big wall of text. All we need to do is come down to here, auto setup net ethernet enabled one, and auto setup uh, net Wi-Fi enabled zero. Change the zero to a one, and the one to a zero. Only if you're using a Pi zero, otherwise, um, if you're using, if you're going to use Wi-Fi, do this. But if you're not going to use Wi-Fi, then skip this step. So, file, save, and we're going to bug off. Now we have to find DietPi Wi-Fi TXT. Open that one up. Now in here, big old wall of text. We're only worried about uh, a Wi-Fi SSID. Okay. In here, we're going to put our network name. Don't remove the ticks. The ticks need to be there. Next, you're going to come down to a Wi-Fi key. Inside the little ticks, you're going to write the password. Clever Wi-Fi password. Okay? And then you're going to click Save. File and Save. Awesome. 
Now, eject your USB and we'll be good to go. Make sure your SD card is plugged into your Raspberry Pi. Make sure your USB device is also plugged into the Pi. And then uh, I'm gonna use the HDMI cable because that's gonna make it easy, easy, super easy for us to uh, be able to determine the IP address. Because of the changes we made to those files, it should automatically connect to the Wi-Fi if we didn't bung anything up. All right, here we are. It booted up. Now take a look at your screen and we're gonna see the uh, LAN IP. That's going to be the IP address. Write that down because we are going to need that right now. Also, username is root and password is dietpi and we are going to remote in because uh, we only have one port on the Pi so we can't have a keyboard and the USB device plugged in at the same time. So let's come over here to putty and we're going to type in the host name. So that's 192.168.1.156. For me, different for you, all right? Now we're gonna click open, and this is gonna pop up. It's gonna say, hey, do you want to connect? We'll just click accept. Yes, we do. Remember the username was root, and the password was dietpi, all lowercase. Click enter. All right. That took a little while, but here we are. Through the power of movie magic, it did not take a while for you. Uh, here it's gonna ask you if you wanna change your passwords. Just say yes. So press left, then press okay. Now type in the new password. Type it in again. Awesome. Now it's gonna ask you if you want to change the password for the other account. Say yes. So click okay, do the same thing. You give it a different password, whatever. Just don't forget them. I just give them the same password because honestly, this is just a small thing. All right. Uh, now it's asking if you want your serial UART console disabled. We're just going to click yes because we don't need it for this. Awesome. Now, uh, now we're at the Diet Pie software uh, section. Uh, we're still not going to install anything. We're just going to go uh, down to install press right or tab and then click OK. This just does the basic minimal install. Let's just click yes and it's going to do its thing. Now it's going to ask us if we want to participate in the survey. Uh, I do. You can see what's in it if you want. Uh, I just click opt in and upload data. Uh, it helps them know that you're still using these devices and they'll keep supporting them I guess. All right. Now uh, we are going to log out because we have to log back in with the DiaPi account. So now type log out. That's going to go away. Open up Putty again. And remember, we're going to connect to the same IP address. So 192.168.1.156. Click OK. And now we're going to log in with the user DiaPi and the password that we set for the account earlier. Awesome. Oh, that's got to be up here. Okay, so now uh, here's our welcome screen. It shows us our device, the CPU temp, our IP address if we need it again, and that uh, you can set a message of the day, but just don't worry about that. Right now, we're going to click uh, sudo dietpi dash uh, software and press enter. That's going to open up the dietpi software software. We're going to come into search software and then type Samba, S-A-M-B-A, and press enter. You're going to get two options, Samba client, Samba server. Press down, hit space, that'll select it. Now press tab and press OK. That'll install the Samba file share server. And now, this is important, come to user data location. We're going to click enter. And now we want to go to drive. We want to launch the drive manager because we have to initialize and format our drive. All right, here it's going to list all of the uh, drives attached to your, uh, your computer or to your Pi. We're gonna look for the device uh, that looks strange. So here we have uh, 
the uh, root directory and the boot directory. That's that's our system. We don't want that. So let's come down to SDA, and we have this one here, the long string. It's not mounted. Might say um, over here. It might say NTFS or FAT or whatever it is. But right now it's not mounted, and uh, so we need to click on this one. Now. Uh, I'm going to come down to format because we need to put a file system on this drive. So click format and you want to change your format mode to drive. That's going to format the entire drive as one partition. So one big folder for the whole drive. Um, now uh, partition table is fine. The file system, we do want to have it as ext4 because that's going to be the easiest for Linux to work with. Now come down to format and uh, press enter. All of the data and everything will be deleted. You want to continue? I do, so we click yes. All right, now once it's done doing its work, it asks you to give it a mount point, which is basically like a name. Uh, makes it easier to identify. So I get rid of these things, and this is a 32 gig disk, so I'm just gonna put 32 gigger. Uh, you can put whatever you want there. Just don't make it complicated, okay? Press enter. Awesome. So now it's told us that uh, it's an ext4 drive press enter now before we go anywhere uh, click up a few times and then go to user data press enter uh, the user data is going to be moved from the sd card over to this one this is what we want this because this just makes it easier press ok awesome now uh, we can go back and press exit by clicking over over and then exit we're going to exit the DiaPi drive manager. Yes. Awesome. So now we have uh, Samba software. If we look for Samba. Uh, we do have the uh, Samba server enabled. Awesome. So we're going to click OK. And now it shows that we're also using our putting our user data on the 32 gig uh, uh, external. So now just come down to press install. It's going to say, here's the things that you want to do. Awesome. Press OK. All right, so now to map a network drive, uh, you want to open up Explorer, come to this PC. Windows 10, you'll see up top here, it'll say map network drive, but in Windows 11, we got to click this little jobby jobby and then click map network drive. This will allow us to add a drive letter and give us other benefits to uh, as well, such as being able to see free space and uh, usage and stuff. So. We're going to go backslash, backslash, and then uh, type in the IP address that we've been using to log into our Pi. And then you're also going to want to press backslash diet Pi. That's the folder that we're going to be uh, working with it. So uh, diet Pi, and then click on connect using different credentials. I'm also going to put a slash. You know, diet Pi with that old slash back there. So have these both enabled. Click finish. It's going to ask your username. So use DiaPi and the password that we set at the beginning. Make sure it's set to remember. Click OK. And now you will see, let's do one of these. Let's make this a little bigger. All right, so now we have a full, this is our, go to this PC. We can now see DiaPi is down here under network locations. So click on that and that's gonna show us these folders. Let's go to downloads. There's nothing in here right now, okay? All right, I've got a one gig uh, sample file over here, and I'm gonna drag that into the Pi. This is our shared on the network, okay? We're gonna see how fast it transfers. This is one gigabyte file. Okay, we're gonna stop that one there. As you can see, it's going very slow. This is a little life hack. I'm going to go plug the Pi into the USB port on my router. All right, now that I've got the Pi plugged into my router, which uh, makes it much closer to the Wi-Fi signal that it's pulling, let's see how long it takes to move this one gig file over. Well, as you can see, that took that amount of time, whatever that is. Um, here, I have a folder of four meg files. They're just four megs each, and there's 50 of them. I call it the folder 4MBX50. So that's, uh, let's go see how long that takes to copy doing different files.
And that took that amount of time. Now, here's something interesting that I noticed. It actually takes longer to read than it does to write. So let's copy these files back over. Let's copy the one gig file. Yeah, let's replace it. All right, now if anybody can tell me why it is faster at receiving and writing the data to the uh, USB than it is at uh, sending it, that would be cool. Um, let's grab the uh, 4 meg 50s. I don't want to rewrite them. Uh, actually, I don't even care. Let's drag those over and see if that, if, it, if it's, let's see if it's faster with smaller files. Well, I think that was more or less the same speed. I don't know. I'll probably put them up on the screen. Anyways, uh, yeah, that is how you build yourself a cheap NAS for like, I don't know, what is it? 20 bucks, 30 bucks for a Raspberry Pi Zero and an SD card and a USB drive. Um, I think that's pretty cool. I mean, it's slow. Uh, this guy would basically work for Raspberry, uh, you know, any Raspberry Pi really. Just use a, a newer version of Diapi. Um, you can use a Rock Pi. You can use an Odroid, like a C4, an XE4, whatever you want. As long as Diapi is available for it, this uh, this will work. Uh, I know I could have just installed Samba server and then pointed it, but uh, I really like the tools within Diapi, and I think it's good software. So uh, make sure to give that a look. Um, yeah. So uh, now you know how to make an as. Um, I didn't want to bother with making it. Uh, anonymously accessible like with guest i didn't really care this uh this is a really silly application for a raspberry pi zero anyway but if, if you know if you're just trying to share like a document or two or three things like very small things uh, it actually does work quite well but uh, if you're looking you don't don't install games to it i might do that i might install games to that uh, to the pi and see if i can load them up uh, and play them that would be fun um but yeah, don't install games to it. Don't install software to it. Uh, this is just, uh, this, you know, seven megabytes per second, like five megabytes per second. That's, that's yeah, no, don't do that. Um, so yeah, silly application for a Pi Zero, but hey, if, uh, like I said, if all you're sharing is uh, a document or like, you know, some photos, it'll do the trick. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming by.